And you know, one of the uh, operators in the world that uh, has uh, disrupted a market, and in fact, the second biggest market uh, in the world, uh, is Reliance uh, Geo by building uh, what is essentially a greenfield 4G network. Now, of course, that, that doesn't just involve sticking up some base stations uh, and, and marketing some services. This is a massive undertaking, uh, and, and not only commercially, but in terms of um, strategy as well. So we've got uh, Matthew Uman from Reliance Geo here to talk about what Reliance Geo has done in the Indian market and, and how that's been achieved. So, Matthew, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, uh, everyone, and uh, thank you for uh, having me, and thank you for having Jill this morning here at this event. You know, the last two to three years, India has gone through disruptions in almost every sector, be it taxation, be it finance, be it telecom. And I've got to say, the impact that these transformations have had on the more than a billion people, most of us would not even dare to imagine it, to be clear. And this has been driven primarily by the new initiatives and the new programs that has been done by the government, the industry, so that the young and aspiring India can have an impact on the world. Now, when we look at the scenario today, there are profound changes, if I may use that term, right? Profound changes and experiences that's happening driven by in an everything connected era. That is driven by, if you will, the fourth industrial revolution where we all know the traditional boundaries of physical, digital, biological is getting blurred at the least. And I believe each one of us have a role to play in creating the foundational pillars of ensuring that the world is a better place. And if you look at everything that has happened and happening in the fourth industrial revolution and the ecosystem as we to play a role in that ecosystem enhancement, be it the IT communications, AI, ML, robotics, etc. The world is changing in front of us. The world is changing how we communicate, how we talk, how we live, how we work, how we think, how we drive. And like I said earlier, each one of us have a role to play in driving disruption across industries and businesses or get disrupted. That's the st story. And welcome to the story of GEO. When you look at GEO, we launched September 2016. July, August of 2016, the pundits of the world, the analysts of the world, many CEOs of the world said, what is happening to this India? There cannot be any 4G. There cannot be an all IP network. Why is that? Here is a 2G country with about 100 MB of usage per month per user. And look at this, 3G has been a successful failure. And there is only 25 million LTE phones in the country. And the cost at the lower end was about $220 to $250 a device. And here is the chairman of a company making a statement that we will have 100 million subscribers in the first six months of our operations. These guys must be totally insane. And we believe we haven't had an opportunity to change India and its history. And that's the story I would love to 
share today. But before I do that, just to give you a quick perspective on security, that's a big topic for me. I'm sure it's a big topic for all of us. Cybersecurity experts blame Windy Umbrella, which is the Chinese intelligence agency, and it, there's got a lot of different APT names associated with it. Cyber attack on the energy national grids in the US, cryptocurrency test, We've, we know about the Atlanta event, and we know about EU's GPDR that is supposed to come into play on May 25th, and the e-privacy which has been deliberated in the European Parliament, very important. Tech trends, just to give you a perspective again. Algorithms, everything is changing. Personalized medicine, including digiceuticals. I'm sure that's a new term we're going to be hearing, like pharmaceuticals. What the heck is that? You don't need to have therapy that changes molecules or a drug. It could be therapy through a video gaming. It could be therapy that is using an app. And Crypto democracy. I think crypto democracy is another big thing where the impact of blockchain across anything and everything or as technology similar to blockchain, not necessarily Bitcoin per se. The VPS for GPS, we talked about that. Voice conversations, Google Duplex. And we saw just a couple of days ago what Google Duplex could do. All the duplexes of the world. Now, and I'm just going to rush through it from Austin to the moon, I think that's a very important topic, though there, it's probably not right here. Edge computing, everyone talks about the edge computing. People talk about my data center environment, my telco environment, let me reassure you, we are not in any of those business. We are in the web scale environment. And India in transformation. When you look at India, India has got 1.35 billion pop population, and if you look at it, 900 million under 35, 650 million under 25. If you look, 1.17 billion mobile connections, 462 million internet users. And number one in mobile data consumption, and I will talk about that in a minute. From 100 MB per user per month to 155th in the broadband consumption in the world, in August 2016, we, in 171 days, 171 days, not 180 days, reached 100 million users. And at that time, it was averaging about 11 to 12 GB per user per month. And the geo effect on digital India. Clearly, when you, when you look at this, oops. I don't know whether I can go back. I don't think it lets me. That's the beauty of the system. And uh, just they want to make sure that I keep advancing. So what that meant, the earlier slide, was India today is the largest data consuming nation in the world. We consume more data in India in the last two years than today a Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile put together. And how did that happen? We believe it's not just the technology, but the service disruption, the device set disruption, and the business service model disruptions. I'm glad it went back, sorry. So, so if you look at the benchmarks from a global transition, this is what I said, 2.6 exabyte versus 0.7 exabyte. And we have announced by end of March 31st, that is our, our financial year, that we have 187. Clearly, we are growing um, extensively every month. And when you look at from S September 16th to uh, somewhere in February, when we reached uh, 100 million subscribers. Now, Geo has been a cat catalyst in the industry transformation. And I'll run through these slides pretty quick in the interest of time. But to achieve the scale that we needed to achieve, what was the scale? We were driving 100 million users in 180 days. And we are driving, hopefully, a 500 million users in a time that we haven't announced yet. And to achieve that, we were doing during our peak days 1.1 to 1.2 million subscriptions per day. 
and to turn up, and that is the fastest any technology company on the planet has done. And remember, in the SIM business, in the, in the connectivity business, in the voice business, you have to validate this is the right user. You cannot give a SIM to anybody. You cannot just go online and subscribe for service. There is a physical SIM that has to be given. And India had to transform to make that happen. India didn't have a social security system. I'm glad in India they did not put a social security system like we have now in the US. In India, they put a lot of security measures in their digital identity system because that digital identity system is called Aadhaar. And that digital identity system is the largest biometric database on the planet today. That means everything from fingerprint to retina to your uh, demographic details to your mobile number OTP, that is your one-time password, all are aligned to make sure that security of the individual is not compromised. Even if you get an Aadhaar number, i.e. a social security number of India, you can do nothing much with it, right? You can say, I got or, or somebody's Aadhaar data. But to do that, we have to create the digital identity in India. And why is that important? Because before we came into space, to take a SIM activated in India took two to three days. After we did the Aadhaar digital identity process, the time to activate in India went from two to three days to five to 10 minutes. And that is how we were able to get more than a million subscribers per day. Now, some of the highlights. We are announced publicly by end of March 186.6 million subscribers. We've announced that we've got an average of 9.7 gigabyte per user per month. And by the way, and I'll, I'll, I'll come to that, um, we have a small phone that we have created ourselves. And by the way, we create a lot of technologies ourselves. And we believe in that innovation that we bring to the table. 372 billion minutes of voltage traffic during the quarter. That is more than 4 billion Volte traffic, anywhere on the, again, in the world, we do not know of anyone who's a all Volte, all IP network. We have no circuit switch to fall back on. There is only one technology. And users consume, as we all know, video is the traffic. We don't like to call our network data centric. We call it video centric. It's about 14 hours of video consumption per user per month. What did we do? We gave voice for free because we recognized our biggest competitors in India had about 85% of their revenue bet on voice. We thought it's a very good thing to give it for free. And data starved India. We <clears throat> wanted to make sure that this 100 MB paradigm is broken and we made simple tariffs. We did not have 250, 280 tariff cards. We had about 14 different tariffs for us, for people to consume from. And like I said, from 156 to first in the mobile data consumption. India is an interesting country in all respects. And I can tell you, after all this growth in India, as of last month, there is still more than 500 million feature phone subscribers who cannot afford a, even a $50 phone. So we came up with this phone. Call it a $0 phone. It's about $20. It's an LTE phone with voice capability as the user experience. You say, hello, Geo. I want to call Steve Saunders. And there it will call him. That's the beauty of that phone. It's about $21, $22, but after the plans, you literally get it for free. With all these applications, including YouTube, including WhatsApp, including Facebook, on that OS, we created an OS along with a company called the Kai OS, and that's that ecosystem. Now, we did not have connectivity alone. Like I said, we are a web scale company. All these applications is what we deliver, primarily media 
service applications, content-related applications, and healthcare-related applications, education-related, etc. And just to give you a quick glimpse, we have MyGeo. It is more than a MyATT, MyVerizon app. In fact, you cannot just do your MACD. We are also in India, the largest retailer in India. And hence, you can change your loyalty programs. You can take loyalty points from here, give it to the store, collect vegetables, as an example, right? And you can also play cricket game and interact. Cricket, this, people are crazy about cricket in India. It's bigger than the Super Bowl, right? And you can interact with your famous or your most celebrity-centric players using this app. GeoTV, it's got more than 500 real-time channels in India that you can see, and the transition is pretty seamless. And this is the application people use almost 11 hours per user, uh, you know, per day, as you, I mean, per month, sorry, uh, from a GeoTV perspective. And then GeoCinema is the equivalent of Netflix. And Geo Music, we got into the music business and we bought another company in India called Savan and created a billion dollar separate entity. And we have magazines, we have Express News, we have Imbibe, which is an AI based educational app in India. And by the way, Geo TV has more than uh, 100 million users. Uh, Geo Cinema, probably about 40 million users. So we are talking about, and Geo Chat, which is the WeChat equivalent for us in India, has got uh, nearly 50 million users. And Geo Money is our payments bank um, app that we leverage uh, so that any user can pay their services. And Geo Health Hub, in India, you know, we, we talk about acute uh, diseases. Uh, let's call it TB, let's call it typhoid, as well as lifestyle diseases, whether it's a heart disease, whether it's diabetes, whether it's uh, hypertension. In India, unfortunately, it's a world of both. We live in, because people usually transition from one to the other, and India needs attention on healthcare, and GEO has taken it on ourselves to make sure we fundamentally disrupt healthcare, as well as education, in India, and that this Geo Health Hub is an engine to help us achieve that goal. In short, what is the Geo and India snapshot? If you look at voice was made free, data was made from $5 a GB to five cents a GB. That was the, and by the way, in India, if you were using data on a 2G network and you were roaming, it was $153, $155 a GB, right, before we came on board. And 4G phones, when we came on, like I said, there was only 25 million phones. Now we've got more than 270 million phones. We have the largest cache of Google, Facebook, Akamai, and also our own CDN sitting on a network. Now, someone may ask, is Google making the money out of you? You know, the good thing is after saying and giving all these things for free, we became profitable at the end of our second quarter, not year, of commercial operations. That also, I would say, is one of the world's first. And now if you look at it, we are not talking about urban cities. We are talking about super urban cities. And what does that mean? In terms of coverage in India, it's a huge challenge. Unlike here, where we, a lot of folks use wood to build homes. In, the, in India, people love concrete. I don't know why, they love concrete. And they build these huge structures, nine inch, 12 inch thick. So look at the DB penetration, 22 DB, 25 DB losses when you touch it, so hence, there is a challenge to doing that, coverage and capacity associated with it. Now, from an all IP uh, 5G ready, we believe we are truly 5G ready. Clearly, we don't have any 5G operational yet because there are no devices we can afford or have at this point. 
but we are the largest IP network by any size, anywhere, again, on the planet, just to give you a, an idea. And by the way, if you had noticed, the, the phone came from 15,000 uh, rupees to uh, 1,500 rupees. That is the $220 to the 20, uh, 20 dollars. Now, what are some of the geo differentiators? Again, very quickly, am I on time? Pretty bad. So, um, if, you, if you look at geo differentiators, it is basically we have built a network for video and we have a business and service model that is totally different, if you will. And our differentiation has been when we built the infrastructure, we automated the infrastructure. We are so passionate about automation, we didn't buy an external vendor solution. We did it ourselves, because that just couldn't scale. So if you look at it, our infrastructure layer, whether it is transport, IP, or RAN, including when people talk about automatic neighbor recognition, when you talk about uh, tra TPC, transmission power control, when you talk about azimuths and tilts that need to be done for better coverage and capacity, we can do that based on what we call as a, either a, a 50 meter by 50 meter bin. We can optimize it. That's the level of automation that we have. And we have our services on top of what we call as our modular platform, just like your IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS model is what we have built our network as truly a vertical integrated platform. It's like iPhone in a box, right? And this is a little complicated slide, again, just to show that we are not an operator. We are an unoperator. We are the UNO, if you will. The Geo UNO, I think, as a digital platform that is not a telco platform, that's a web scale platform, is the fundamental differentiator because we have disrupted technology, automation, and the service model together, along with content and the video centricity associated with it. Just real quick, this is just to tell you, when we did automation, we did automation, everything from infrastructure to build, to provisioning, to operate, to customer service, and including geography and NHQ. Our operations in silos is what we typically see and all of us have seen. We have usually a TMIP for fault management. We have a MICOM for performance management. We have EMSs, NMSs. You know what we did? We had one box, one data lake, and we went straight to the network elements and collected the FM, collected the PM, and created the configuration management and did that across domains. That was the fundamental difference end-to-end, -end, including the workflow management, so that the guy on the field gets it on his phone or his tablet and he is monitored for how long he has taken to deliver. Now, the next aspect of it, this is not 100% production ready yet. This is about 80% done. This is our collaboration tool, as we call GeoTribe, that is taking foresight to the next level, where so that your friends, your colleagues, your crowdsourcing can happen. In fact, we, one of the KPIs is, that is measured in our system is anyone who has helped their colleague to solve a business problem or added into the knowledge base of the tribe system. It's a collaboration tool. Um, Geo to drive beyond mobile. So we've disrupted the mobile industry. How did we disrupt the mobile industry? Mass scale of infrastructure and network, affordable de devices, and end-to-end -end automation. What are we after? In India today, there is only 18 million folks 18 million broadband, so-called broadband connected homes of the 250 million homes in India. Why is that? Why is India deprived again from a home? Look at enterprise. Enterprise is not in any better shape. The whole enterprise business today is only about six billion, including services included. We absolutely believe it is about four times, five times potential of that in the near term. Same as the home. Why should Indian homes be not connected? We want to disrupt that. And that is the next big thing you will see in the coming months that we will be addressing. And what will be the services in the pipeline? It's everything from gaming to health 
to advertisement and at-home and enterprise services. What are the key initiatives happening in Geo? Hardware, software, disaggregation, everyone is talking about it. Massively distributed edge computing, extremely important for us. And of course, XRAN, ORAN, JRAN, we are in it. We are already creating it, and we will align with them. But at a fundamentally different cost structure. And we absolutely have a prototype of this working in our labs today, engineered by us, developed by us. That's what we believe in. We created our own access points. We created our own small cells. We create our own edge boxes because that's what it takes for us to fundamentally disrupt. Now, what is our definition of 5G? 5G is not a technology called wireless. It is a set of capabilities. Reimagining the potential of India, India and Geo are just getting started. Thank you very much, folks. If ever the phrase disruptive operator was applicable, this is it. That's a, just an incredible story of the past couple of years. And this is only the beginning. I mean, if you completely disrupted the mobile market in India, which was absolutely massive. We're talking about you came into a market when there was more than 900 million people already connected to some kind of mobile um, uh, service. But now you're looking to revolutionize basically uh, the fixed line network and enterprise services as well. So anything else apart from that? A any other part of the, the uh, whole Indian economy that, that Geo is going to be going after? I think India's agriculture sector, the health sector, the education and the manufacturing sector are too important for India. And we believe we have a role to play in taking that to a new level. Right. And we look forward to doing that as well. Excellent. Well, Matthew, great. Thank you very much for joining us today and you for bet. giving us an update on, on G. Absolutely Thank fascinating. Thank, Thank you very much.